Hey, Shion. I... Don't. I... Okay. I... I'm sorry. But if you come any closer, you'll only end up getting hurt. Because of your thorns, you mean? Trust me, I've endured... No, that's not it. You don't understand, I... <sighs> Never mind. Sorry, just forget I said anything, okay? If it isn't your thorns, does that mean there's something else? It's just... <sighs> it's nothing, really, okay? So you can stop asking me. I... <sighs> okay. In that case, I... I'll see you up ahead, okay? <sighs> oh, it's you two. I suppose that makes me the last one, then. We better get a move on, or else we'll never hear the end of it from Kisara. Right you are. A month has passed since we vanquished Volron. I would have thought that the Renans on Lenigus would have made their move by now. Yet they still remain as silent as ever. We have no idea what happened to Volron's body, nor its whereabouts. The Red Woman also has yet to reappear, for that matter. And contrary to what I had heard, when the Renis Alma formed, not five, but six elements were present, with darkness constituting the sixth and final Master Core. Were either of you aware of this? You mean about the Renis Alma? Of course not. Same. I had no idea a Darkness Master Core even existed. What about Xion's Maiden powers? No. That was the first I learned about that, too. Or anything about having that power. Me too. I remember thinking the same thing. What could it all mean, I wonder? There are so many questions with too few answers. Particularly when it comes to that Red Woman and her abilities. Were it any other ability that used astral energy, I'd say it was an astral art. But hers was... different. Speaking of astral energy, we also mustn't forget that while the other Master Cores disappeared when forming the Renis Alma, for some reason the Fire Master Core remained. It may well have been the work of your maidenly powers. Alfin, are you still able to wield the Blazing Sword as before? For now, at least. That Renis Alma sucked most of the energy out of the Fire Master Core, but it still has enough for me to use the sword. And the sword is safe inside of me for the time being. Good. At least that's one thing we needn't concern ourselves over. You can say that again. We have more than enough to deal with as it is. Let's go. Hey, wait up! Hey, remind me, just what exactly are we all doing here? What do you mean? We're helping people, aren't we? Could've fooled me. Lately it feels like everything we're doing ends up half-baked. <laughs> we liberated the people of Pelegian, but their hearts and minds are no less under the yoke than the day we found them. As for Volron's cronies, we have no idea where they scampered off to. You think I don't already know all that? We're doing everything we can, aren't we? We didn't choose to get stuck here. Sometimes you have to play the hand you're dealt. Besides, you've seen all the same things I have. You know as well as I do that deposing the Lords alone won't solve all the world's problems. Rinwell's right. We've gotten this far, haven't we? We can't just leave things unfinished now. I guess? I mean, I didn't think we'd be singing around the campfire as soon as the wall came down, but still. The fight isn't over just yet. At least not while Lenigus remains a threat. I'm just sick of all this waiting. If they're gonna invade, why don't they get a move on already? Stop that! Don't you think we've got enough problems as it is without you tempting fate? <laughs> Spot something? Hmm? Oh, no. Just wondering if I could see any armored guards. Armored guards? You mean Volron's soldiers? The moment we defeated their lord, all those guys bolted out of there. And not just out of the castle either. The city, too. For better or worse, it was the guards who looked after the city's Danans. 
Without them, making Pelagian half habitable again has been one big headache. It's not like they were on their last legs. They could have chosen to stay and fight, but instead they ran away and disappeared without a trace. But without a lord to follow, they can't have any place to go. Unless... You don't think they went to Lenigus, do you? It's not completely out of the question. Though I'd say it's more likely they're biding their time somewhere, just waiting for the perfect moment to strike back at us. The people here in Pelagian are nowhere near ready to defend themselves. Ah, <sighs> great. Another headache to worry about. Is it just me, or was today's dinner a little low on salt? I felt that it was seasoned perfectly, so as to bring out the flavor of the ingredients. Last taste buds are still like a kid, so if his food isn't rich enough, I bet he doesn't feel like he's eaten anything at all. Don't make fun of me! We all need salt in order to survive! He has a point. You do lose stamina if you don't get enough salt in your body. Yeah. I remember seeing people trying to lick the rocks back in Calaglia. What? Why would anybody do that? Sometimes you can find rocks out there that taste salty. They used to say it was because of all the tears we slaves shed. Most likely, that was actually rock salt that they found. When our provisions ran low, Magal would often bring some back for us to use. At the time, we used it because it's all we had. But now there's something hearty about rock salt I like. Even more than table salt. Is it possible, perhaps, to find any rock salt in these parts? It is. You have to know what you're looking for, but when I find any, I always break some up to refill our supply. The flavor even changes depending on what kind of terrain it comes from. Sometimes I end up collecting more than we need, just in case we like it. Wow, Kisar is really serious about her salt. You can always count on Kisara to be earnest. That's why we have to do our part and not add any more to her burden. <clears throat> What's the matter, Kisara? Is something wrong? Oh, no. Nothing. It's fine, really. I'm just a bit worried about what'll happen to all these folks. Right. It'll take time before they start thinking for themselves again. Indeed. That is part of it. However... What I'm even more worried about is what will happen to them after that. What do you think they're going to want once they realize how cruel Volron was to them? Probably revenge. <laughs> what happened to Ganeth Haros is the worst form of oppression we've seen. But treated cruelly or kindly, slaves will rise up. Lenigus aside, there are still remnants of Renan supremacists scattered throughout Dana. You mean all that trouble we went through to get rid of the Lords might just lead to more violence? That's the last thing I want to see happen. Of course not. And if we don't do something to prevent it all from starting up again, there could be even more bloodshed for us to regret. There's still a lot we don't know about the Renan rulers. Whatever the face of truth behind their veil, it's on us to put a stop to them. But there is one thing that's clear. Whatever we do to finally end it, our motives can't be getting back at the Renans, or it'll all be for nothing. So, what exactly is it that you're saying? That we should just act as if nothing happened? Law's right. We can't expect everyone to just forget all the pain they've endured up until now. Not so easily, at least. But we have to at least try to change course. We can't just keep allowing history to repeat itself like this. Exactly. Look, I won't deny that between the Crown Contest and 300 years of oppression, there's a lot of bad blood between the Danans and the Renans. But all these problems are just too big for us to try to carry the burden on our own. We'll keep doing our part in the interim, but we need to take this one battle at a time. Where are you going? Since when do I need your permission to move around? I wasn't saying that you do. I'm not sure why you're biting my head off about it either. Oh, that's so typical of you. How can you be so relaxed about all this? At this very moment, the enemy is doing who knows what behind the scenes. And yet we're just sitting here twiddling our thumbs in Ganeth Haros. I know that. But our hands are tied right now. What do you want me to do? And what's gotten into you anyway? Is there something you want to say to me, Shion? 
Look, you're right. Forget I said anything. If I said something to hurt you, I'm sorry. But I honestly don't know what I said to upset you so much. I really wish you would tell me. You don't need to apologize. You didn't say anything. It's not your fault. It's not anyone's fault. Not really. Then why? Please just drop it. I don't want to talk about it. All right. If that's what you want, I won't push any further. I'm sorry. <sighs> it's fine. Just... don't be too hard on yourself, okay? <sighs> Something's eating at you again, huh? I don't know if I would say that. I just... I mean... <sighs> Actually, I guess I do have one or two things on my mind. My people, we lived in hiding, so we never really experienced the full extent of Renan oppression. Not directly, anyway. After Almadria killed my mother and father, though, I... I guess that's when I started hating them so much. The Renans, I mean. But then I think of all those people who were born into slavery. The ones who never even got angry in the first place because it was all they ever knew. I hear you. Every city we've been to, it's the resistance that gets labeled the troublemakers for having the guts to do the right thing. When it comes down to it, sometimes I wonder which of us really has the better way. You can't let your anger eat away at you, Rinwell. But then again, losing your parents that way... Hell, who could really blame you for it if you did? <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is... Uh, sorry. Hell, it's hard putting this stuff into words. No, I get it. You're saying that grief and anger are different than hatred. I never thought of it like that. But hearing you say it, it makes sense. Thanks, Law. Uh, you're welcome? What's happening to Rena and Lenigus? It looks like Lenigus is... transforming? But into what? What's going on? How the hell are we supposed to fight the Renans if they're packing that kind of arsenal? It seems they've broken their silence at last. My concern is that object they've dropped into the water. It's as if they're driving a literal wedge into Dana. Not just into Dana, but her own resistance too. And what's with that beam of light coming down from above? Got any idea what that could be? Astral energy. Are you serious? All of that is astral energy? But that... It's a lot for sure. Not even all the astral energy harvested by every lord combined compares to that column. They're trying to squeeze every last bit of energy out of the planet. But why? I thought they only needed to harvest astral energy as part of the crown contest. Who cares? If we don't stop it now, the whole of Dana is going to be hollowed into oblivion! Uh, oblivion... Do you think that red woman is behind this? It certainly wouldn't surprise me. Just as the Sovereign, the Maiden, and all five Master Corps are gathered in one location, she appears out of nowhere bearing a sixth core. She then forces the two of you to help her assemble the Renis Alma. Just what kind of person is this woman? You mean you don't know her? Pardon? She was there at your palace, wasn't she? I figured you knew who she was. Are you saying I should be familiar with this woman? Well, sure. I remember seeing her with you back at Ottolina Palace several times. Everyone in the Guard always wondered who she was. Now that you mention it, I remember seeing her with Balsif, too. You saw her, right, Shion? Shion? Oh, sorry, I drifted off. As far as I remember, the first time I saw her was when we ran into her in Pelegian. Seriously? How could you two not notice her before? She sticks out like a sore thumb. I guess I always figured she kept an eye on the Lords for the Renan top brass. You're sure you don't remember ever seeing her before? I'm certain of it. My memory has never failed me. 
But if it's not that, then... We'll get to the bottom of this later. Right now, that wedge is a bigger concern. Well, what are we gonna do then? We're not gonna be able to leave Ganeth Haros until we come up with a plan, right? Cislodia lies beyond the northern mountain range. Yeah, but we haven't found a single route through those mountains while we've been here. And we haven't gotten clues from any of the freed locals either. Surely there must be a way through. This realm can't have been completely isolated from the rest of the outside world for 300 years. Volron may have simply sealed and hidden it. Okay, then let's try asking the townspeople again if they know anything. Who knows? We might have missed something the first time around. Sounds good to me. Better that than trying to build a boat from scratch. Let's start searching. I bet the whole of Dan is losing its mind right about now. And just when we'd finished liberating all the realms. So much for things getting somewhere close to normal. It's too calculated. As if whoever's behind all this was watching us. The people of Pelegion seem pretty unfazed given the circumstances. They've yet to get the full range of their emotions back. Maybe it's for the best. Can you imagine the panic otherwise? Yeah. We wouldn't have been able to leave, that's for sure. Whatever Lenegus is planning, it's a fair bet this wedge they've sent down is just the beginning. Even now, they're stealing away Dana's astral energy as we speak. Come on, we don't have much time. I don't know when it happened, but we sure are hauling a lot of stuff these days. I was just thinking the exact same thing. Glad to hear I'm not the only one. We should probably clear some stuff out, like our old weapons we're not using anymore. They must be in pretty bad shape by now. No way. Those are still good as new with a little polishing. If anything, I'd say all our armor is what's weighing us down. But that armor is also still good once you fix it up. Besides, better to have too much armor than too little. You can trust me on that one. Well, what about all these dumb old antiques we're lugging around? If we sell those off, that should lighten our load. Simpletons, such as yourself, who can't appreciate the true worth of such things, is how precious art vanishes from history. Pretty art's not gonna save you in a fight, man. Stop it, you guys! This is no time to... All I really meant to say is, you can tell how much we've been through by everything we're carrying around. Honestly, that's all. Oh. My deepest apologies. It appears that I may have rather overreacted. Yeah, I guess it's only natural we'd have so many souvenirs by now. I... might have been out of line too. I guess all this stuff really is a sign of how far we've come together. Yeah, every little piece is its own treasure filled with memories. Tell me, Alfin, wherever did you learn how to wield a sword? I was wondering the same thing too, actually. I'm guessing you knew how to fight before you met the Crimson Crows, right? I used to be a soldier who served a Danon master. I never saw the guy's face, but I still fought for him because he was my employer. Looking back, it wasn't all that different from being a slave. A Danon master? That must have been before the Renans brought you to Lenigus 300 years ago. You must fight using real Danon techniques then. Really? We used to have our own sword arts? There's a lot of our own history we've lost since the Renans first invaded. It's not all magic and art. I'm sure it includes things like sword styles, too. It's incredible, and also a little surreal to see those arts still survive after all this time. Not only that, but I first learned these moves while serving one ruler. Only to end up turning my sword on the ruling class altogether. Pretty ironic when you think about it. I apologize if I dredged up unfortunate memories for you. Nah, we're good. It's in the past now. All we ever did in those days was stir up trouble. You're using those skills for a good cause now. It's not all bad. I suppose this is what people mean when they say that every cloud has its silver lining. Exactly! He's using those sword skills to make the world better. Could be a lot worse. True enough. I will stop worrying about mentioning it then. Hey, do you have time to talk? There's something I need to ask you. Of course. What's up? It's about the doll I used to have as a little girl. 
I gave it some more thought, and I still don't remember actually receiving it from anyone. You were so little. I don't think it's that surprising you've forgotten, is it? Yeah, but here's the thing. That doll was so old, I'm starting to think I just always had it with me from the start. I know that it's extremely unlikely, but after last time we talked, it got me thinking. Maybe... Maybe you brought the doll that child made with you to Lenegas. I couldn't be. Are you saying you didn't? Ugh. <sighs> Look, logically speaking, I know it's a lot more likely that you didn't bring it with you than you did. But you can't say for sure you didn't, right? Crazier things have happened. I always thought I'd be alone, only to end up meeting you and Law and Rinwell and Kisara and Dohalim. Sometimes things happen in life that we never thought possible. You make a good point. I left everyone and everything I knew behind 300 years ago. But now, I'm not so alone anymore. Exactly. You crossed all those centuries to find all of us, so... Why can't a little doll have made the same jump, too? Right? Look, it's up to you to decide if there's any meaning behind all of this. But I choose to think there is. Yeah, I think so, too. There's something beautiful about the whole thing that simply can't be denied. No wonder we couldn't manage to find them. They've been holed up here all this time, hiding. The remnants of Volron's forces. You think they were planning an ambush on Pelegion? Possibly. Then again, knowing how blind their devotion is, maybe they were just waiting. Waiting? For Volron, you mean? Even though we already defeated him? But... Yes, I suppose you're right. For these guys, that would just be a technicality. They act more like worshippers than subjects. They're probably still in denial that he was overthrown in the first place. Either that, or they were biding their time until the next crown contest. Either way, their allegiance is to their lord. Who they're convinced and expectant will return. So in the meantime, they wait patiently in preparation for the day that he finally does. That's way more than just loyalty. It's no less than total subjugation. You've noticed it, haven't you? Notice what? I'm referring to Xion. I never thought you of all people would come to me about her. Yes, well, what concerns me has more to do with what machinations may be currently unfolding in secret on Lenigus as we make our way along this tunnel. And you're saying it's related to Xion in some way? Perhaps. She believed there was a good possibility that the Renis Alma may free her from her thorns. One would think after losing the Renis Alma, she would be more dismayed, and yet she isn't. Why? There's also the matter of the power that she inherited from. You heard what she said. She didn't know about the Maiden's power. Mere ignorance does not preclude her deep connection to the events unfolding around us. You recall when her thorns went rampant in Castle Del Faris. I've never seen dark astral energy manifest in such a way. I thought you said all Renans had dark astral energy inside of them. Correct. However, what Xion exhibited was far beyond what any ordinary citizen could ever possibly possess. <laughs> and let me be clear. I do not intend to cast doubt on Xion or her motives. Nevertheless, I cannot shake the feeling that there's more to all of this than what we currently know. Do you disagree? <sighs> Come to think of it, what happened to those four lights that fell from Lenegas along with the Wedge? All four of them scattered in different directions. It's anyone's guess where on Dana they might have landed. I'm not entirely sure. But it seemed like those lights may have all been different elements of astral energy. So even though they're using the Wedge to siphon off energy from Dana, they're shooting it back down to Dana as well? Why? I don't know. It all happened so suddenly. 
Hopefully it's not a sign of some new threat we'll have to deal with. But if that red woman has anything to do with the Wedge, then what could that light... It's weird, isn't it? Oh? The red woman. Shion and Dohalim said they'd never seen her before Pelegian. Are you saying they're lying to us? No, it's not that I think they're lying, just... There has to be some reason for it, right? Well, one thing the two of them have in common is that they're both Renans. Okay, you two. Put a pin in it for now. I know that we're in the dark about a lot, but for now, let's focus on getting through these mountains. Yeah, of course. A boat, huh? Where are we gonna find one of those? It's not the kind of thing people just leave lying around. Especially not Renans. For an Imperial power, they never have shown much interest in maritime expansion. Still, I dare say there should be the odd small vessel here and there. All well and good, but that structure is slap bang in the middle of the ocean. A fishing boat won't cut it. Let's just try to find one that won't sink us halfway out, yeah? Not that it needs to be a huge galley like Almadria's or anything. Just as well since we've passed, let's see, literally zero huge galleys. All I know is we have to reach that thing in the ocean. Anything that might work, I say we try it. Thanks to Bregan, it seems like Ganeth Harrows should be in good hands, at least. I wonder who they'll send to look after things. It'll be someone from one of the other Resistance organizations, no doubt. They could do a whole lot worse than someone like Doc. A knowledge of medicine would go a long way there. Wait, do you mean the old guy back in Calaglia? Ganeth Harrows would be one hell of a trek from there. He'd have to get here first. My brother's old second-in-command, Lagiel, would be a perfect fit, too. Pity she'll probably still have her hands tied up with work in Menencia. Mahagsar will be the same story. They won't have the manpower as it is, let alone enough to start exporting it. Man, everyone's still struggling to get back on their feet, huh? Knowing Bregan, he'll probably take things into his own hands. He seems like the kind of guy who enjoys a challenge. Thinking back on it now, though, it does kind of make you realize just how many people we've gotten to know in each of the places we've visited. That's true. And each and every connection we've forged is priceless. Anyway, we can trust Bregan to take care of things from here. Come on, let's focus on the task at hand.